Evaluate the expressions, find the exact values. The first expression is inverse sine of sine negative nine fifths pi radians. Let's begin by sketching negative nine fifths pi radians in standard position. To do this, it's helpful to recognize that negative nine fifths pi radians is equal to negative one and four fifths pi radians or negative 1.8 pi radians. And we know negative two pi radians would be one complete rotation in the clockwise direction. So to sketch negative nine fifths pi radians, we start along the positive x-axis, and then because the angle is negative, we rotate clockwise nine fifths pi radians. Again, this will be just short of one complete rotation in the clockwise direction, let's say to here. So let's say this is the terminal side of the angle, negative nine fifths pi radians. From here, let's find the reference angle, which is the acute angle here. If we rotate another one fifth pi radians, we would be at negative 10 fifths pi radians or negative two pi, and therefore the reference angle here is one fifth pi radians. We can also write one fifth pi radians as pi over five radians. And now assuming this is the unit circle, the terminal side intersects the unit circle at this point, let's call the ordered pair for this point x sub one comma y sub one. On the unit circle, x equals cosine theta and y equals sine theta, so we can represent sine of negative nine fifths pi radians as y sub one. And let's go ahead and do that. Let's write the expression as inverse sine of y sub one. Inverse sine of y sub one returns an angle in the interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, including the endpoints, such that the sine function value is y sub one, which means in standard position, the angle must be from zero to pi over two radians, or from zero to negative pi over two radians, including the endpoints. We know any angle that has a terminal side of this ray will have a sine function value of y sub one. And notice how the reference angle, this angle here of one fifth pi radians or pi over five radians, does have a sine function value of y sub one and is in the interval of the output or range of the inverse sine function, and therefore this simplifies to one fifth pi radians or pi over five. Next we have inverse cosine of cosine at 22 ninths pi radians. Let's begin by sketching the angle in standard position. It'll be helpful to recognize that 22 ninths pi radians is equal to two and four ninths pi radians, and four ninths pi radians is going to be less than one half pi radians, or pi over two radians. So to sketch the angle in standard position, the initial side is along the positive x-axis. Because the angle is positive, we now rotate counterclockwise two and four ninths pi radians. Well, two pi radians is one complete rotation in the counterclockwise direction. We need to rotate another four ninths pi radians to sketch 22 ninths pi radians. And therefore the terminal side is going to be here just short of the positive y axis because if we rotate it to the positive y axis, that would be another one half pi radians and four ninths pi radians is less than one half pi radians. So this is the angle 22 ninths pi radians. Because you rotated four ninths pi radians, past one complete rotation to determine this terminal side, we know the reference angle of this acute angle is four ninths pi radians. The terminal side intersects the unit circle at this point. Let's call this ordered pair x sub two comma y sub two. Because cosine theta equals x and sine theta equals y on the unit circle, we can represent this cosine function value as x sub two. Let's write the expression as inverse cosine of x sub two. Inverse cosine of x sub two will return an angle from zero to pi radians that has a cosine function value of x sub two, which means in standard position, the angle must be from zero to pi radians or this interval here. Well, once again, notice how the reference angle of four ninths pi radians, this angle here, is in the interval from zero to pi radians and has a cosine function value of x sub two, and therefore the expression simplifies to four ninths pi radians. Let's look at one more example. Here we have inverse tangent of tangent of six sevenths pi radians. Notice six sevenths pi radians is just short of pi radians, and therefore the angle is just short of half a rotation in the counterclockwise direction. 
let's go ahead and sketch the angle in standard position. The initial side is here. Again, 6 7 pi radians is going to be just short of half a rotation counterclockwise. Let's say the terminal side is here. Where again, this is 6 7 pi radians. If we rotated another 1 7 pi radians, we would be along the negative x axis. And therefore, the reference angle is 1 7 pi radians. Because we are now in the second quadrant, let's call this point on the unit circle negative x sub 3 comma y sub 3. On the unit circle, tangent theta is equal to y divided by x, and therefore we can represent tangent of 6 7 pi radians as y sub 3 divided by negative x sub 3, and let's go ahead and do that. Let's write the expression as inverse tangent of the fraction is going to be negative y sub 3 over x sub 3. And now the inverse tangent function returns an angle in the open interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 that has a tangent function value of negative y sub 3 divided by x sub 3, which means in standard position the angle must be from 0 to pi over 2 radians, not including pi over 2, or from 0 to negative pi over 2 radians, not including negative pi over 2. Notice how this terminal side is not in the correct quadrant, but remember that tangent is negative in the second quadrant, where x is negative and y is positive, as well as in the fourth quadrant, where x is positive and y is negative. Which means we will need to sketch a reference angle in the fourth quadrant of 1 7th pi radians. And therefore the terminal side is going to be this ray here in the fourth quadrant, where again the reference angle is still 1 7th pi radians. And this point on the unit circle, because x is positive and y is negative, would be x sub 3 comma negative y sub 3. But notice how the quotient of the y coordinate and the x coordinate is still going to be negative y sub 3 divided by x sub 3. And therefore the angle in the interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 is going to be this angle here. Rotating clockwise, we are going to have negative 1 7th pi radians. The expression simplifies to negative one-seventh pi radians. I hope you found this helpful.